I have had the pleasure of working at Queen's for the last 10 years. I've also worked at Kingston City Hall, the building in the center of the slide. Uh, no two cities and universities are closely aligned as Kingston, Ontario, Canada and Queen's University. Um, Queen's students are very much a part of the local fabric here in Kingston. Uh, you'll see a photo of me in the bottom left hand corner of the screen with some recent graduates on their graduation day, celebrating as they should on graduation day, receiving their degree from the university. We have a thriving environment with domestic and international students in our community. Um, and it's a dynamic small city located close to Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and the United States border. We have a tremendous uh, international uh, footprint with lots of uh, intelligent, gifted, diligent students from all corners of the globe. Uh, and uh, every year I'm amazed at the cultural fabric that make up uh, the MBA journey here at Smith. The yellow arrow on the screen is where Goods Hall is located on the aerial view of the Queen's University campus. As I mentioned, we are a short car ride from Toronto, the largest city in Canada, about two and a half hours from Toronto by car, two hours to our nation's capital in Ottawa, uh, a little under three hours to Montreal, and the closest bridge to the United States is about um, 45 minutes up the road from here. Syracuse, New York is the closest major city, about two hours south. Uh, we are located on the confluence of three major waterways. Uh, the Lake Ontario, we are in the upper northwestern corner of the lake. Uh, we are also at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River Basin and the Cataraca River to the north that extends into the Rideau Canal system. Um, you can walk to Lake Ontario's waterfront in the nicer weather, uh, about a five minute walk from Goods Hall and you can take your materials down to the, the peaceful waterfront and study um, on the shores of Lake Ontario. Lots to, up to see and do on our traditional university campus. It's it's a definitely a, a bustling smaller campus within the the one of the best university campuses in the country. Um, when you think of Queens, you think of quality and the the spirit of the education that you receive when you're on campus is infectious. Uh, our students thoroughly enjoy their year on campus as MBA students. And as you can see from the top right hand corner, our 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 historic downtown with lots of cultural events. Uh, entertainment, sporting and uh, facilities, uh, great restaurants and bars. It's a great way for you to unwind after a, a busy day on campus. And I know that you'll feel safe on campus as well. Uh, our, most of our students live within a 10 to 15 minute walk of our pedestrian friendly community. Studying in Canada, there's been plenty to, to be spoken about there uh, of, of, of late. Um, if you're an international student listening to this, uh, you've been thinking about um, uprooting your life and moving to Canada, and there's lots of different reasons why you would want to consider doing that. First of all, the, the education that you'll receive continues to be at a high quality. It's a world-class business education here at Smith School of Business. There are globally respected sectors of banking and energy and mining, as well as growth in entrepreneurship and tech. Uh, we are the best of the best at the direct line between a great education and that post-graduation employment opportunity. Uh, accessible pathway to Canadian residency. Many of our international students prefer to live and work in Canada after their MBA journey, and we can certainly assist with that process. And of course, uh, I feel very comfortable as a Canadian citizen to say that we are a stable, peaceful, and welcoming society to all peoples. And uh, I've gotten that feedback from um, a multicultural audience uh, through the last decade in my role here at the Smith School of Business. For those of you that were monitoring the Financial Times Global MBA rankings uh, yesterday when the, the new ranking was delivered, um, delighted with the outcome of the full-time MBA from Smith School of Business, ranked number one in Canada by quite some margin. We were tickled by the outcome of that uh, piece of news that came out yesterday. Um, we've gone up considerably year over year. And of course, a deeper dive, you look into some of the other areas that we remain number one in Canada, uh, best in career services. 
you come to the MBA program to undertake it for its uh, academic pedigree, but also to uh, secure that next great job uh, quickly. And we were the best of the best at that through this ranking. Best in the alumni network in Canada. I believe we're 40th in the world in the alumni network. Again, so impressive. Um, the alumni that you communicate with before, during, and after the program uh, become a big part of your network and a big part of the reason why you undertake an MBA in Canada. Of course, we're the best value for money in Canada. You know, we recognize that this is a significant undertaking of, of time, energy, and money. But, uh, being number one for ROI in Canada uh, certainly helps you know that you're maximizing those opportunity costs. So I'd love to leave this slide up here for the full duration of the webinar, but we have to move on. So obviously yesterday was a, a great day for the school and the program, and we're tickled that uh, Financial Times has honored us uh, in this capacity. So uh, I was at a fair on Saturday, and one of the, the big questions I get on a regular basis is, uh, you know, how is our program delivered? We look at a, a modern methodology of delivering our content. You know, we're not fully lecture-based. We're not fully case-based. There's a number of different ways in which we deliver that. And this slide hopefully um, drives that home. I'll start at the bottom and move my way up. Uh, class instruction and discussion. Yes, we do have a traditional MBA classroom. It's about 10 feet from my office uh, to the left. Um, we have uh, 80 seats in our theater. So uh, again, a smaller uh, cohort by design. We do that deliberately. Again, so you're not anonymous and you know all of your, your classmates, your faculty, your supporting staff, your coaches uh, by name. They will know you by name. You'll not get lost in a shuffle of a, an auditorium with 150, two or 300 other students and people you may never meet. Um, we believe in the value of, uh, of smaller is better in terms of the network and the support that you get during the program and the dialogue that you'll have in the classroom with your peers and your faculty. We do use CASE uh, as a regular part of our course delivery. Um, many faculty will integrate CASE use into their uh, core curriculum and our elective courses. Um, you will be working within living CASE studies as you move through the MBA year as well. Many of the courses that we have ha are, have simulations that they offer, um, actually applying the work that is done in a theoretical form. Um, next week, our MBA students are starting the negotiations course. You don't just read a textbook and become an expert at negotiations. You actually uh, roll up your sleeves and simulate that activity with a real case in front of you and, and playing a role within a, a true business case that is applicable. So you actually get to, to practice this and learn it in real time with another peer opposite you. Real world business projects, both team-based and individual-based. Uh, great way for you to apply the learning that you're uh, doing in class and applying it to a real client on a problem, challenge, or opportunity that they're facing. Um, many of our students are looking to move into the consulting industry. So project work during the MBA program is effective applied learning. And finally, experiential learning or learning by doing. Um, you know, we have many exchange opportunities that our students undertake. Um, applied learning is critical. Uh, getting out of the classroom, uh, getting away from the, the textbooks or the laptop and uh, ex truly experiencing what you're learning in meaningful ways. Some people will apply their learning to a, a community not-for-profit or something in which they can give back to the student population in meaningful ways. So a number of different ways to try on your MBA hat as a student, combining the technical expertise and the interpersonal skills that become an effective MBA student. Uh, if I was to be asked, you know, what are one of the ways that sets the Smith experience aside from another MBA program, it would be the power of teams. We are known nationally and, and growing globally as the team-based MBA. And why do we do it that way? Well, we feel that it mirrors today's progressive workplace. When you go into that next great job, you're going to have to work effectively in teams, people that are not the same as you, multicultural people people with diversity across uh, professional and academic backgrounds, across gender lines. Um, we feel that this models the Canadian workplace, and certainly we train our students to become effective leaders within that model. It's required to excel in organizations across industries. If you don't get along with people and you can't relate to others in an effective way, you're not going to be very successful. Uh, and we truly believe that this model 
um, develops team and leadership skills. When you join the program, all of our students are put on an academic team for the first six months, very diverse teams, as I mentioned, culturally, academically, and professionally. And uh, the, the photo that you see on this slide is a recent uh, MBA team. And as you can see from their faces, um, a good mix of men and women from people from across Canada and around the world uh, collaborating on their academic deliverables. So a question I often get at, at fairs and webinars is how do we assess the ideal MBA candidate? And this is a little peek behind the curtain to our admissions committee, uh, the four buckets, as it were. Um, let's start with the intellectual horsepower um, or the background in academia. So we'll take a look at your transcripts from your undergraduate experience. Uh, perhaps you've earned a first master's, um, your GMAT or GRE is a part of that assessment. Uh, maybe you've won some awards, maybe you've done some extracurricular activity on campus when you were a student. Um, that's fairly standard across any MBA program. Second category, work ethic and resiliency. How do we measure that? Well, it's through your traditional work experience post undergrad. Two years is our minimum, uh, four or five, depending on the year is the average and a ceiling of seven or eight years. Uh, we need to see some professional progression there. Maybe you've been promoted uh, once or twice in your post undergraduate career. Your references are a part of that assessment. Um, are you client facing? Are you working on major projects? Can you tell an effective story through that uh, lens? Next category, going clockwise, uh, coachability and team experience. Uh, why team? Because we're a team-based MBA. So if you enjoy working within um, that sphere, uh, it's a good, good way for you to accentuate your experiences there. If you like things like sports, music, theater, community service, you're probably going to be a great fit for our program. We've got Olympic athletes in the MBA program here at Smith. Again, the ultimate team experience, the ability to work and effectively and relate to others. Coachability, what does that mean? That means your ability to give and receive feedback, to coach others, as well as to be coached. We have four different types of coaches available to you in the MBA experience. Your career coach, your team coach, an executive coach that's appointed to you that you can utilize for that extra bit of help. Uh, adjusting from student life back to professional life. And then we have something called Fit to Lead, which is health and wellness training. It's optional, but highly recommended to maintain that, that balance that we look for in physical fitness, mindfulness, and even proper nutrition. So a great way for you to, to plug into that coaching aspect. If you like that and you seek that out, this is a great fit for you. Um, if you're more of a lone wolf and you, and you like to be left alone and, and to not look into ongoing self-improvement, then this perhaps isn't a good fit for you. Finally, my favorite, uh, which is one that's difficult to measure, but you certainly know it when you see it, the so-called soft skills. I like to call them durable skills, um, emotional intelligence or EQ, interpersonal skills. What does that mean? Um, the effectiveness uh, you demonstrate as a leader, uh, cultural sensitivity, empathy, presentation skills, networking skills, uh, appropriate sense of humor in the right environments. Um, generally, I like to tell a student, you know, think about your best friend at work, why you like that person, why you seek them out to uh, problem solve and project manage. Um, you know, when decisions need to be made in the, in the office, you tend to gravitate towards that person. That's who we want in the MBA program, somebody that has that effectiveness. Um, if you can check each of these four boxes, you're going to get into the program, you're going to do well in the program, and you're probably going to get a great job after the program because we designed this based on what global employers are looking for in post-MBA hires. Again, I mentioned earlier, number one in Canada, uh, 30th in the world in career services, uh, the best of the best. We operate in a very competitive landscape here in Canada in the post-MBA career marketplace, so being number one in that category um, should put your mind at ease. This is the class of 2022 career outcomes. Um, we will have the class of 2023, the most recent graduating class report up on our website. Uh, I've been with the program now for 10 years. Uh, every year, 95 to 98% of our students have secured that post MBA job within three months of graduation, often sooner. Um, usually the, one of the largest total compensation in Canada um, one of the other points that I was taking from that 
FT ranking recently was the biggest gap between entering salary when they join the program and exiting salary when they move on to that next great job. That uh, that uh, gap in between those two is the largest in Canada. So it's hopefully, again, meaningful that when you make the investment to undertake a full-time MBA, um, you will be rewarded through a post-MBA career that uh, gives you the, the complete compensation package that you're looking for. Most MBA students are making a, a career pivot along the way. So um, it's not surprising when you see that 95% make at least one career transition as they move through that experience. Uh, just under a thousand jobs posted for MBA students at Smith through our portal and over 300 events uh, throughout the cycle, both live in Kingston, live in Toronto and virtual events as well. So you are supported from beginning to end as you move through this looking for that next great job. Where do our alumni end up? Um, alluding to the environment here in Canada. It's not surprising that many students, both domestic and international, prefer to continue to live and work in Canada after the MBA experience um, indicated by this map. Um, that's not to say that if you want to leave Canada, if you'd like to work in the United States or Asia or, or Latin or South America, you can certainly do that. We've had students uh, land wherever the dreams may, may guide them. Um, I remember a student who was specific to working at Disney in Orlando, Florida, and that was their specific plan, their direct post-MBA desire, and they ended up working there after working diligently with their coach to create their network and to build that straight line to the Magic Kingdom and Disney in Orlando. So they were able to take their, their, their mixed interest in you know, arts and theater with their newfound business acumen and ended up working uh, in analytics and uh, in uh, event planning at, uh, at Disney. So again, if you can dream it, you can do it. And our Career Advancement Center is the best at helping you align that. So here's our fees for the next uh, uh, cohort starting in January, 2025. So uh, an early thank you uh, for applying early to the program. Our domestic fees and international fees are, are noted there. It is an all-inclusive fee. I say all-inclusive because there are programs that you'll be looking at that may have some hidden costs, and I certainly encourage you to do a deeper dive there. Um, this includes your tuition. All of your books and cases are delivered right to your team room or picked up here in the office. You don't have to go to the bookstore like you did in undergrad and line up or order online. We take care of all that for you. All of you are, your MBA resources are provided within that. So all of your coaches, uh, all of the resources that you could possibly need uh, as uh, an active MBA student, we provide that right to your door. Case competitions, very popular for several MBAs. They will go out on the road, either for um, national or regional case competitions. Uh, we pay for your registration, accommodation, and travel as a part of that. And we go to Toronto quite a bit throughout the uh, MBA year to meet with our corporate partners and alumni at our downtown Toronto facility. So again, the travel costs associated with that are covered. Um, the only additional cost that you might have is, I'm going to cover it on the next slide, would be your, your living arrangements, your, your rent, your groceries, your utilities, uh, cell phone, things like that that you might have. Of special note, we don't have an application fee for our program. So that's something that also differentiates us from other programs. Uh, we don't take a dollar from you until you uh, receive an offer to join us and, and pay your deposit to commit to your seat for January 2025. The aforementioned cost of living, uh, it's less expensive to live in Kingston than it is in some of the larger cities in Canada. Uh, this is direct feedback from our students and our students were consulted on this slide as to the general accommodations that you'll find in Kingston, Ontario as an MBA student. Um, accommodations, food, phone and internet, um, you know, discretionary funds. Um, everyone has a different standard. Everyone has a different budget. Uh, but that's this is a, a helpful slide in terms of what you might expect to pay above and beyond your student fees to be an MBA student and to live in our community here in Kingston. Financing options, of course, we recognize that this is a significant investment of time, energy and money undertaking an MBA at any school. Um, so having that financial support as a domestic applicant or an international applicant 
is beneficial to you. I'm sure all of you are thinking about scholarships. Um, you know, do we offer scholarships? Yes, every candidate is considered for a merit-based scholarships, either uh, from our operating budget or from a donor-funded scholarship. Um, about 70% of any given cohort receives some form of merit-based scholarship, which means that approximately 30% will receive of an offer of admission without a scholarship. So keep that in mind. Uh, we've uh, long been partners with the Forte Foundation, creating opportunities for uh, female business students. Uh, we have a uh, scholarship specific to the LGBTQ2S plus community in the Ramba organization. We provide scholarships for um, students with accessibility concerns. And we also have scholarships for uh, black and indigenous students. So um, quite an array of opportunities available to you and it's growing every year. And we're, we're very uh, grateful to our partners for providing these scholarship opportunities to us. Um, if you are a domestic student, the RBC student line of credit is your best option. We've had a long standing relationship with RBC and um, most students will formulate some combination of personal savings, a student loan and a scholarship to manage that student fee. If you're an international student, uh, Empower is the best option for, for you and your application advisor can assist you with the application process to aid uh, that endeavor as you consider the January 2025 start date. So I am a big fan of the Smith model and the role of the application advisor. Terry Lynn and Rachel are the best at what they do. Um, I receive compliments every year about the support, the customer service, the responsiveness of our application advisors. And, and it's certainly something that separates us from, from other uh, programs in the marketplace. I've, he I've heard this for the last 10 years. I'm glad that we continue to do it this way. They are on your side. The application advisor will help you with the preliminary assessment of what they see, taking a look at your profile. They will guide you through every step of the process and help you present that strong case to the admissions committee for their review. And on the left-hand side of the screen, we have what we look for, an updated cover letter and resume, and, and speaking on behalf of people that write resumes and cover letters for a living, um, the cover letter should be one page, three paragraphs, briefly to introduce yourself, who you are, and and why you're undertaking an MBA at this time, and why specifically the Smith program. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about your background and, and what has led you to an MBA journey at this time in your career. And finally, uh, what are your post MBA goals? You don't need to regurgitate your resume. That's a separate document, and certainly more of that information will come out uh, during those interactions with your application advisor and the admissions committee down the road. Academic backgrounds: so we will need to see your official transcripts from your undergraduate university. They can be sent directly to your application advisor here at Smith. Work experience, two years is the minimum. Uh, four or five is the average, depending on the year. And eight or nine is, is the ceiling um, every year. So again, there's a, a good diversity in age and stage as business students. Um, so again, tell that effective story as you move through this process. Two references are critical. We'd love to hear from your boss, that person that can speak to your effectiveness on the job as a, a young professional. We'd also love to hear from a colleague, a client, a major customer, someone that can speak to your effectiveness in a professional environment as well. GMAT is a critical aspect. I get a lot of questions about whether or not we prefer the GMAT over the GRE. There really is no preference specific uh, to our program. Uh, I get a lot of questions at the fairs now about GMAT waivers. Um, we do offer waivers and it's a case by case basis. Um, you'll need to augment uh, why you were, are making that request. However, I will say for the benefit of those that are considering that category, um, it's definitely in your benefit to write the GMAT or GRE and I'll, and I'll explain why. Um, of course, uh, nobody likes to write tests that they don't have to. Um, there is a cost involved uh, to write the GMAT or the GRE. However, uh, depending on the industry that you're targeting in post-MBA work, uh, a GMAT or GRE could be beneficial. You know, roles such as uh, top levels of management consulting, top levels of finance, investment banking, 
uh, a GMAT or GRE score could be beneficial to you to augment your profile. It's also a part of our scholarship rubric. So if you're looking at a merit-based scholarship, highly recommend writing uh, the test as a part of this process. It is February 13th, 2024. Our program doesn't start for another 11 months. So you have plenty of time to consider writing that. So the, the cost and the, the effort involved in writing the GMAT or GRE sometime in 2024 could benefit you to the tune of, of several thousand dollars to assist you in your, not only your career, but a scholarship that you might be worthy of as well. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, we got away, away, we got away from the essay, the long essay question that was uh, instituted in most MBA programs about a decade ago. We've gone to a video question format and one written response through a software package called Kira. Um, a couple of uh, video questions will pop up on the screen. You have a couple of moments to consider your answer. The light turns green and then your answer is recorded and sent directly to the admissions committee. There's no right or wrong answers and you can't study. Um, so again, if you bring the, the best version of your professional self to that engagement and to be uh, open and honest and authentic in your answers, uh, we have every chance, every belief that you will be successful in that particular uh, aspect of your file. Don't overthink it. Um, you know, there's no need to to panic. I think you'll probably find that the anticipation is worse than the reality when you think about the career experience. There's also a written response where you'll have a question on the screen. And again, it's timed and you'll have a few moments to consider your answer and uh, submit that. The whole process takes about 15 minutes of your time as opposed to, you know, several hours or days to, to write an essay. Once all of these items are in hand, you, your file is complete and sent to the admissions committee uh, to be considered for an interview. Uh, that is usually a one-on-one -on -one format, either live here in Kingston or through the Zoom camera. And then the committee will um, review your full file and you're guaranteed an answer back from the admissions committee on a completed file within two weeks. Uh, we don't wait for some magic day in June or September to uh, undertake uh, the decisions we know that you have uh, plenty to uh, move ahead on in your personal lives and your careers and uh, having that definitive answer back from your preferred school uh, quickly will only benefit all stakeholders as part of this equation. So next steps, uh, please submit your resume and unofficial transcripts for that preliminary assessment. I'll give you the website on the next slide. Um, you can continue to monitor us for upcoming events future webinars on specific topics. Uh, we do have uh, virtual and uh, live open houses here at Goods Hall. There's uh, more images of the home of Smith School of Business at Queens, uh, Goods Hall building exterior and interior. Um, so we hope that you would join us here on campus as a part of that journey towards becoming a student. You can schedule uh, virtual coffee chats with student ambassadors. Um, the incoming cohort that's been on campus now for about a month. Um, we are populating our student ambassador page and that should be up again within the next couple of weeks so you can reach out to them and create those uh, connections online um, to learn more about it from the student perspective. And again, continue to keep in touch with us through um, email, Skype, Zoom, social media, great ways for you to keep plugged into the experience here at Smith. And there's our, our website, smithqueens.com slash MBA. You can click on the full-time MBA off and, uh, a button and begin your application to the program. We don't use high pressure tactics. Um, again, there's, there's no cost involved with going down that road. The admissions committee um, will meet with you in due time. Your application advisor remains your best friend on the front end. Um, and there's our local, sorry, our, our, our collection of social media options at the bottom of the slide. So great ways to keep up with us and the activity on campus. I'm gonna leave that up on the screen so you can uh, kick that website down if you need to. And um, I'm just gonna open the chat room now and check on the questions that have accumulated over the last half hour or so. And thank you so much to those who have uh, entered their questions. Hi, do you accept international students? We, we certainly do. And uh, every year it depends on the year, of course, but um, Approximately 40 to 50% year over year are international students. 
This year's cohort, I was just amazed when I looked at the cultural makeup. We have 20 different citizenships uh, and dual citizenships in our program this year with a, a student footprint of 80. So that's a pretty impressive cultural background. And when you look at the other names and faces uh, in your MBA cohort. Next question. Oh, this is more of a comment. Congratulations on becoming the best MBA program in Canada through the full, uh, Financial Times rankings 2024. Thank you very much. That's a, a fine compliment. And it certainly speaks to the, the strength of our student body, our alumni body, uh, the faculty members at the front of the room who do impressive uh, course delivery research and publications throughout the year. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the, the tremendously diligent and supportive women and men that support you, uh, the program staff here. Um, I've had the pleasure of working at Smith now for the past 10 years, and uh, it's an honor to work with such so many committed professionals as we move forward. Next question. Uh, given the current rise in cost of living and housing crisis, do students struggle managing costs post MBA? Um, it's hard to paint with a broad brush uh, with this particular question, and I appreciate the question. It's, it's certainly, uh, a concern with with everyone uh, globally, not only students, but certainly working professionals. Um, yes, there there is uh, housing concerns and cost of living across Canada and and growing globally. The best way I can answer this is: you are considering applying to one of the best business schools in Canada. Uh, as the previous commenter mentioned, we are ranked number one in Canada for full time MBA experiences. Um, that Queens and Smith pedigree will carry you not only through your MBA year, but beyond the program as well. You will go into that next great job with confidence, with renewed skills, and the skills that you'll be taking into those marketplaces are highly marketable. Um, I, I've seen Queens and Smith graduates across multiple industries, multiple roles. They become leaders in their organization. And I must say they are, are fairly compensated as well. And I am always excited to see that trajectory going upward. Um, that first job that you undertake post MBA is likely not going to be your last job. MBAs tend to move quickly upward within their organization or they exit to something uh, more interesting or lucrative or applicable to their career desires. So uh, we are preparing you here at Smith for what is to come next. And I, and I like to know that uh, our students are moving towards those post-MBA career goals with confidence and um, with grace. Next question. Uh, if one wants to work in Dubai, UAE, does Smith offer sufficient support to get a job over there? Um, I referred to this on a previous slide. Uh, the vast majority of our students prefer to live and work in Canada after the program, in North America a little bit more specifically. Uh, however, if you'd like to, to work in a global environment in another city, that's a specific conversation that you would have with your career coach when you're here in Kingston. It's a very specific plan. And again, as I, as I mentioned, um, you know, we've had a number of different students over the years that say, uh, I'm coming to Canada from China and I'd like to return to China, or I'm coming to Canada from Costa Rica and I, and I fully intend on returning to Costa Rica after the program. Um, I would say that those candidates are generally in the minority. However, um, again, a, a very specific conversation that you could have with your coach as to where you'd like to go. Does Smith provide exchange programs on full scholarships, including airfare, accommodation, et cetera? Uh, short answer is no. Um, we certainly do not provide a full scholarship for an exchange, um, hence the name, the exchange how that works is Smith School of Business has over 30 partner schools globally doing MBA programs on their own campuses. We send our students there and they send us their students usually in the fall as well. Um, the uh, academic fees that you would pay on that exchange at a partner school, those are waived as a part of that academic experience. However, there are out-of-pocket costs for things like what you've noted here in the chat the airfare, the accommodation, your, your meals, uh, while you're overseas, those will be out of pocket. Uh, year over year, we usually see about five to 12 
students do some form of short-term or longer-term exchange during their MBA experience. Are you expecting recruiting to get better from this year or the market is still nimble as of now? Um, I have heard class of 2024 had to struggle a bit to land jobs. Um, uh, so I, I thank you for augmenting that. I, you were when you were mentioning recruiting. I wasn't sure if you were mentioning recruiting for the next cohort or career side. So, um, it's, it's again, it's a. I don't have a crystal ball. It's it's difficult to project. Um, you know what the career market is going to look like in Canada uh, in the in summer and fall and next winter when our MBA students are actively looking for careers. Um, I respectfully disagree that, you know, the, the 2024s had to struggle a bit to land jobs. Um, again, number one in Canada for career services. Um, every day I get new news from uh, the previous cohort uh, that are landing jobs in their desired industries. Yes, um, the Canadian economy was, was down last year. And uh, yes, uh, fewer companies were uh, posting career opportunities. However, I, I had a recent conversation with my colleagues in the Career Advancement Center, and thankfully, uh, the employment reports are on par for recent years. And as I've mentioned, 95 to 98 percent of our students secure meaningful work within three months of graduation, often sooner. So the indications that I've heard from our Career Advancement Center staff, uh, our alumni and our corporate partners is that Smith MBA students continue to show very well. Uh, with those transferable skills that global employers are looking for. So again, if you see yourself as a Smith student in future years, hopefully you can be a part of that positive trend as well. I feel very confident that our students can go forward and uh, do show quite well with their desired industry. What percent of the batch has gotten jobs from the class of 24 as of now? Um, Again, we're on par with where we usually are in February every year. Uh, approximately two thirds to three quarters of the class have jobs in hand, which is right where we usually are in February. Does Smith plan on building a residence for MBA students? Uh, not as now, no. Um, the vast majority of our students live within a 10, 15 minute walk of campus in private dwellings, uh, a shared home accommodation, or um, an individual apartment space. Hi, Jeff, do you offer any GMAT or GRE waivers uh, except expired scores like UBC Sauter and Yale? Um, I, I partially answered this question earlier on the GMAT and GRE. Um, with regard to the expired scores, uh, the answer is not usually. Um, Naveen, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I would have that dialogue directly with your application advisor and uh, that person can do a deeper dive into your full profile and give you a more specific answer to you. I, I don't like to paint with a broad brush. Um, specific questions like that are on a case-by-case -case basis. Is the MBA course provided as a STEM course and is it also provided as a dual degree? Um, again, Abhishek, I, I, I need to know a little bit more about that. That's a uh, Fairly vague question, and I and I'd like to know a little bit more about what you'd like to do there. So perhaps you could ask that question offline, and uh, I could give you a, a more detailed answer uh, after the webinar. Uh, another question here. I'm being mindful of the time, as as uh, we've been on the the clock now for almost 45 minutes, and I want to to wind down to give you back to your lives. I have a three-year undergraduate degree followed by a three-year law degree. Am I eligible to apply? If yes, then which program GPA will be considered? Um, both. We'd like to see both. Um, and I think your undergraduate experience and your law experience are applicable as a part of that academic bucket as you apply to the program. So again, share that information with your application advisor. How many students of the cohort at Smith have a manufacturing background? I want to switch to a management consultant role from sales management role for mechanical machine manufacturing. How do you see it at as a feasible and appropriate transformation to do? 
Um, again, every single cohort is different with respect to our cultural, academic, and professional backgrounds. Um, I was marveling at the number of different degrees that we have in the program this year, 36 different academic backgrounds. Um, of course, we see traditional uh, business, um, entrepreneurship, healthcare, um, arts and science, people that have done very diverse things in their lifestyle. And again, I, it's it's difficult to give you a specific answer on one specific industry. Yes, we have had students in the past with manufacturing backgrounds. They've come, taken that unique uh, profile to the business school here, undertaken a full, full-time MBA model and moved into post-MBA life in a desired competitive industry like management consulting. Whoops. Is there an application fee for submitting the application? Nope, I've already answered that. And if someone wants to connect for doubts with you, how can we? Um, I, I suspect you mean doubts with regard to your application file. Um, again, your application advisor is your best friend on the front end of this experience. I, I've mentioned it a few times. They are your best friend. They are a differentiator for you as a potential applicant. And um, it doesn't cost you anything to engage. It doesn't cost you anything to begin that dialogue with the app advisors. They are the experts. They've seen you know, thousands of applications globally over the years. They know what the admissions committee is looking for. I would go through that process with them uh, to undertake a deeper dive into your specific profile. So I'm looking at the clock here. It's uh, 12.45 Eastern Standard Time here in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. We've we've run to about 45 minutes through the dialogue here today. Um, thank you very much for the engagement. Everyone that, uh, that sat in uh, online and uh, listened to the questions in real time. And uh, happy to continue having those conversations. If there was something, there was a couple of very specific questions there that I probably wasn't able to answer in a, the time uh, that we have with us today through this webinar, but my email address was on the slide that it, the introduction. So if you'd like to send me a message to jeff.coons at queensu.ca, I'd be happy to continue that dialogue. If they are uh, application and admissions related questions, Terry Lynn or Rachel are your best friend um, and it can certainly take you forward to the next steps. So once again, Thank you very much for uh, registering for this webinar and for participating uh, with your Q&A. And I look forward to seeing your application move forward as you move through this year. Hope to see you again very soon.